In this tutorial, I'll show you the basics of how to set up a pickup, as well as respond to different events such as on pickup, on pickup use, on pickup release, and on drop. In Unity here, with the usual empty scene. Before we begin working on an actual pickup, let's go over here to the descriptor and show off some of the settings that you can have for pickups specifically. So there are two main settings that are specific to pickups. One is the respawn height Y. By default, this is set to negative 100, but I tend to set it something much smaller so the objects don't actually fall for that long. But then when an object reaches this height, it then does this object behavior at respawn. At default, it is set to destroy, but if you want it to respawn the object to its original location when it hits this, you then change it to respawn. Behavior is up to you, but I like these settings. So now, let's make an actual pickup. For this example, I'm just going to use this thing here, which is just for visual purposes. It can be any model you want, but for this, I'm just having the object which just shows the colored axes for where the pickup will be. For this tutorial, I'm just going to show how I set up the pickup, but you can do this in other ways. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new empty game object. It's already set to 0, 0, 0, but then I'm going to call this pickup. I'm going to first add a box collider, which you can use other colliders as well. This is just what I will be using. Next, add a VRC pickup script. Now, before I press enter here, notice that it's on the default layer. When I click to add the script, it now changes to the pickup layer. The pickup layer is slightly different in the sense that you as a player cannot collide with this layer. So if you want a pickup that you can stand on, you will need to change this layer to something else. Default, you can stand on, so you could change it back. But for now, I will leave it at pickup. So another thing to notice that when I added the pickup script, it also added the rigid body. Rigid body is how Unity tells like game objects that they will be performing physics calculations. For pickups, the default rigid body is pretty good. It will fall using gravity, but it will also interact with other objects. If, say, you don't want it to fall with gravity, and you don't want it to interact with other objects, what you can do is you can set the is kinematic. What this is doing is it's basically saying that Unity will not calculate the physics through like collisions of other objects. It will simply just say the object is there, but will affect other objects. Kinematic basically means that it will only move through other means, like scripting, or, say, you picking it up and moving it. So now, let's go over some of the fields in the pickup script. The first one here, disallow theft. By default, when you are holding a pickup, any other player can just take the pickup object from your hands. If you want to prevent that, you can check this box here. When it's on, if you are holding the pickup, another player cannot take it from your hands. Next, physical root. I have never messed with this, and it's not important for the basic pickups. I'll look into it later, and if I think it's actually worth using, I'll just like add a note here in this video. Exact gun and exact grip are both ways to force the orientation of the pickup in the player's hand. Exact gun will make it so that it's always pointing in the same direction relative to your avatar's hand for all players, in VR and in desktop. Exact grip will make it so that the grip is based off the angle of the base of your controller. This will be different for all VR controller types, and I have not really found a good use for this yet, as it doesn't align with the avatar's hand at all, it just kind of looks weird. You can have both of these values set here, but then inside this orientation value, you can pick which one you want to use. Any will basically mean that it doesn't use either of these. It'll just be wherever the player decided to pick up the object. If you go to grip, it'll then force the grip orientation, and then if you go to gun, it'll force the gun orientation. Auto hold. Basically, this is what tells the player if they need to hold down, say, the mouse or the controller button to continually hold the object. By default, auto detect pretty much just says no, I think, but then if you decide to put it to yes, a player would then just click the mouse button or click on the controller and it'll be automatically held to their hand until they click it again. For the Rift, apparently this is broken and they are always required to hold down the grip button, but it's easy on the Rift compared to the Vive, so I don't know how much of an issue that is. The use text is what you want to be displayed when the object is picked up. I haven't messed with the throw velocity and throw velocity boost things. You would probably just need to mess with these settings to see if you can find a one that you like. I just leave them as one because when I mess with them before, desktop and then VR have very different results. 
It's easy to throw things in desktop, but VR, it basically depends on the size of your avatar. The larger you are, the easier it is to throw it harder. Pick up a bowl. This is kind of a weird setting where if this is checked, you could pick up the object, and if it is unchecked, you cannot pick up the object. You cannot edit this setting in game, so it's only there for very special purposes, which is not really important for this video. The only time I've ever needed to use this with it unchecked is just to have an object that is not pick upable, but needs to have an ownership transfer, but that's just a bug that hopefully they'll fix soon. If you want to have an object that is not pick upable at a time, do not use this setting, just turn off your collider up here. Proximity. I don't understand what's going on with this setting. It works for on interacts for triggers, but it does not work for pickups. I have tried most values for this and it does not change how it works in game. So you can just kind of ignore it for now. Hopefully they'll fix this bug. So as these settings are right now, this object is pick upable. The one thing that I'm noticing is that my visuals here, which I'm using as the model is not inside. So now it'll pick up with that. One other portion of this is that I have the collider in the ground, so let's just move this up a little bit. Four, and then change the size of this. Let's just say also 0.4. So now when I press play, the object will properly have physics and go into the ground. So one other portion with this settings is that it is local only. So as of right now, every user will see this pickup at their own location. So if I picked it up, but you were in the world, you would not see that I picked it up. So what we can do for that is we can go and add in a VRC object sync. So object sync is a very unusual script. It basically gives this object ownership to specific people. If you are the owner, all the physics and transform location is calculated on your client. And then if you pick it up, you're the owner. If somebody else picks it up, they are now the owner. Sometime later, I'll make another video describing other pieces with ownership and object sync. So the basics of this pickup are done. It'll show for every client, but let's go ahead and do some tests with the exact gun grip. So for now, create a new empty object. I'm going to call this gun, or actually I'm just going to call it hold point because that's what I like to call it. And then inside here, I'm going to drag this in exact gun. And then for orientation, I'm going to put it to gun. So the values set for this are kind of strange. It's almost as if they're like using blender style, like pointing directions rather than Unity's vector. So if you want this object to be set so that the Z is still forward for your gun or object, you then need to change the rotation to these values, negative 90, negative 90. It just kind of like flips it. So now X is the forward, Y is the X, and then Z is the new Y. Strange, but those are the weird settings. Setting up for the exact gun is pretty much the same way. You drag a different game, or you drag a game object into here for the transform and then set it to grip. I'm not going to show it in this case because I haven't found that many uses for it yet. So you just have to play with the settings until you find one that you like. So we have the pickup object here, but it's pretty boring. You can pick it up and drop it, but that's about it. So let's add some events to it so you can do things with the pickup object. Go down here, add VRC trigger. And inside this, we can add up to four different things that happen for pickups. One is on pickup. You can add an event here. Another one on drop. And then for these two, this one will trigger whenever somebody picks up the object. And then this one will trigger whenever somebody releases the object. So for this example, let's just go inside. I'm going to create a sphere. That is a big sphere. Let's make that smaller. And then I'm going to put the sphere out in front of the object. Just for this example, removing the collider. And I'm going to have this called as the <laughs> picked up sphere. So inside this, we'll actually turn it off. And over here, I'm going to say basic event, set game object active. And then put the pick up sphere inside, set it to true. And then on drop, I'm going to pretty much do the opposite. And using the new thing in the SDK, just drag it in, set it to false. So what I've done here is when you pick up the pickup object, it'll turn on the sphere. And then when you drop it, it'll turn off the sphere. You can use these triggers to do specific things for your pickup, say 
activate some boolean in an animation to change how the pickup looks. You could do many things with this. This is just a simple example. The next thing that we can do is that we can also do on pickup use down and on pickup use up. Find that one. These two triggers here are nice if you wanted to do specific actions for your pickup. The easiest example is to say if you have a gun and you click the trigger while holding it, you can then fire it. So for this example, I'm pretty much going to do the exact same thing, but instead of having the sphere over here, I'm going to have the sphere up top, which is not in view right now, but that's fine. So I'm going to say use sphere. By default, it is going to be disabled, but then inside here, I'm going to on pick up use down, meaning they are using it. I will say set game object active. Drag the use sphere in, set to true, and then do the opposite in the on use up. So setting it to false. So now with this pickup, when you pick it up, one sphere will activate. When you use it, another sphere will activate. And when you drop it, this sphere will disappear. And when you stop using it, opposite order here, this sphere will disappear. When you drop it, you will not be using it either way, so it'll still activate or deactivate. So, as I said, these are just examples. You can do whatever actions you want here. And I have not talked about this much in the tutorials, but all of these are set to always buffer one. So if somebody joins in late while someone was holding it, these will activate properly. But you can then change these and like link things together, but that's going to be for another tutorial. So in VR chat, we've got the object in front of me. If you look at it, we've got the Z direction going forward, Y up, red to the X, right, or X to the right. So when I click it, my hand now follows the exact location. As you see, the object sphere is in the front. And this is a bad example for desktop mode since I can't see the top, so you'll just have to look at the shadows here. But when I press the mouse button, you see that the sphere now appears at the top over there. Yeah, I should have used a better example of location for the spheres here. Sorry about that. But we have the object. It follows my hand probably. That's all for this tutorial. As usual, these are meant to be just the basics, and I hope that you can expand off what was shown here. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you haven't done so already, I recommend joining the official VR Chat Discord, as there are many people there willing to help out. I'm typically responding to questions in the world-related channels. Until next time, thanks for watching.